Okay, now that we have our measurement of 480 nanoseconds for the unshielded twisted pair cable, let's go to the Excel spreadsheet again and start putting in the figures. So let's just put UTP, uh, the nanoseconds, 480 nanoseconds, uh, the traveled distance, we'll just oops, put that back to there. And is 472 feet in two directions, of course. Um, so we'll divide that by two. We'll just copy that formula down. And now the velocity factor of unshielded twisted pair needs to be brought into effect, which it is now. Uh, the velocity factor of unshielded twisted pairs being 73%. So now that gives us um, a measured with the pulse generator 172.31 feet. So as you can see it's almost seven times longer than the previous cables. Now what I had actually measured with this and uh, the actual measured was 174.5 feet. So if we put that in here um, 174.5 it's already in feet so I don't have to do any calculations on it. So you can see now that um, with the unshielded twisted pair we're a little more inaccurate um, but like I said I'm not sure 100% on how accurate my oscilloscope is and um, I had to do the measuring of the uh, cable the hard way um, because the biggest tape measure I had was only about uh, what was it 12 feet or something like that so um, lots of sliding of wire and everything else so but you can still see here though it's 172.3 feet and 174 so it's still even though it's you know 170 odd feet long I've still basically using a pulse uh, being able to calculate its length to within about uh, a foot foot and a half um, given more accurate measuring uh, device uh, better scope some of the higher frequency scopes um, you would definitely be able to do a much much more accurate measurement of this so um, yeah uh, basically we've yet again proven that um, the Agilent 33622A waveform generator can be used to measure the length of cable and it can be used to measure different kinds of cable um, byproduct of the nature of controlling its output load impedance um, actually allows you to very quickly get a rough estimation of the characteristic impedance of the cable um, just by balancing what you observe on the oscilloscope and um, well basically it's very easy and saves you hundreds if not thousands of dollars um, from buying a purpose-built time domain reflectometer so um, that's pretty impressive so I will do a couple more experiments um, with this basically to show you what it's like to have um, two cables connected even if they're different impedances um, and you know uh, throw a little more um, confusion into your mind as regarding uh, Ohm's law and, and things like that of course we're not really breaking Ohm's law just to uh, take a little bit of panic away from you um, it's just about knowing what a cable or a transmission line behaves like when you have a high frequency pulse or signal uh, traveling down it. What I'll also do um, shortly is a um, experiment that will actually show you what happens if the reflection is coming back at the t same time as you're trying to actually send out um, another signal or if your pulse width is um, wider than the, re the reflection time which can obviously easily happen if you have um, a cable or a, a wire that is shorter than you know a few feet uh, going between say a microcontroller and a sensor of sorts um, if you're reading at high data rates with fast edges then you're gonna get reflections if you haven't properly terminated the cable and I'll show you some of the effects that you'll get from that. I did allude to it in one of my earlier videos with some of the pictures near the end of the video um, but I'll actually demonstrate it with a practical 
um, example because the flexibility of the Agilent waveform generator will allow me to increase the frequency and or the pulse width um, to a degree that allows the reflections to overlap with the outbound signals. And I will also show you what will happen um, or should I say how you can detect from one end of the cable whether that cable is properly terminated. I've already shown you how you can measure its characteristic impedance even without actually having to put a load of the right impedance on the um, far end of it. But I will also show you um, the effects of how you can have two different cables uh, of different impedances connected to the same line um, or even the same impedance and actually detect that there are two cables on the line. All right. So anyway, uh, that's for another video. So for now, uh, that completes the how do I measure the length of a piece of wire and how fast is the speed of light anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it educational. Um, you can actually simulate this. You don't really need an Agilent, you know, uh, high-end waveform generator to do this. You could create a pulse generator with some high-speed um, TTL uh, or CMOS logic gates. Um, you would still need the oscilloscope uh, to be able to do your measurements, of course, but you don't have to have an expensive waveform generator. The generator just simply allows you to uh, play around with the settings and experiment a little bit with the signals um, to get a better reading or to, um, like I showed you there, very quickly determine what the characteristic impedance is of the cable. A um, little bit of a cheat that I discovered with the device so uh, it wasn't pre-planned that I'd be able to do that but it actually looks like it's quite good. Um, it also showed that the Agilent 33622A waveform generator actually has a fixed output impedance of 50 ohms and the displays for voltage and things like that are all calculated based on knowing that it has a 50 ohm output impedance and what you tell it um, it has connected as an impedance as well so right now I've got the 100 ohms and because it's a 10 volt output and I've got 100 ohms and 50 ohms that basically is a 3 to 1 ratio um, if you talk about 50 ohm steps so that's 66 percent on one side and 33 percent on the other and we actually got 66 point uh, sorry 6.667 volts on the um, display when I adjusted the output impedance to tell it that it thinks it has a hundred ohms connected to it so uh, very handy little feature uh, one that I'll be remembering to use in the future so anyway that completes the video thanks very much